Shooting with Sony cameras to some people is a bit of a mystery. People say that the menus are hard to use. People say that they're very hard to color grade. No matter what camera you have, you'll undoubtedly start to see people on the internet shooting with that exact same camera with footage that looks a lot better. There are just a lot of tricks and secrets that you learn using the cameras for a long period of time that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to get you up to speed on how you can shoot the absolute best footage on Sony mirrorless without any additional lenses or accessories. Heading into 2020, every single manufacturer is making great cameras that can do amazing video. So this is the reason I really don't recommend jumping to a new camera system the moment a manufacturer releases something with some flashy new features. You have to remember this is a marathon, not a race. And the key to unlock the potential of any camera is to maximize the camera's strengths and minimize the camera's weaknesses. So one thing that's a bit of a shame with these Sony cameras is the Kodak. It's been the same for a really long time. It's 8-bit, 420, and that's not the most robust Kodak here in 2019. So you really have to make the most of what you've got. Okay, so this is gonna sound really basic, but we need to start this conversation talking about just getting basic good exposure and what that means with these Sony cameras. Then we can broaden it out further. Do you guys know old school video guys? They always say protect your highlights and that's like their mantra but I feel like exposure is much more situational than that. You're constantly having to adapt to different circumstances and different pieces of information that you're trying to focus on. Okay, so here is a situation that is very difficult to get an exposure on. If we do that old school video guy, protect the highlights mentality, the image is gonna look really bad and underexposed. So we're obviously gonna need to overexpose a fair bit. Now something I think that's important to understand in all of this is that when you raise your exposure, you're also adding saturation and color information to certain parts of the image. So if your skin tones are buried in the shadows, all of that color information is going to be below a layer of noise and it's going to be a little bit harder to pull that out. So if we do go for the overexposed look, the colors and the information on the skin tones is going to look best. Getting your exposure in this situation is more of a creative decision than anything else. So a silhouette can be really powerful visually, but you may also want to capture detail on the skin tones and on the face. You're going to have to figure out creatively what part of the image you want to prioritize and how you're going to tell your story in your video project. So another term I want to talk about is highlight roll-off. And I hear this term thrown around a ton. It's almost become this term people use a lot like color science. But what you need to know is every manufacturer has a camera that can capture 12 to 14 stops of dynamic range. So you can get good highlight roll-off with most cameras if you're exposing the image properly. So for the best results regarding skin tones, you want those skin tones to exist at 70 IRE or lower. So when that value starts to get higher, you're gonna start to notice that that highlight roll off is gonna be more compressed on your skin tones and the skin tones will look worse. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here are some shots that in my opinion show off really good highlight roll off. Now some of the images do have some hot spots and we can see some harsh lines for peaking they're kind of secondary parts of the image and we are making creative decisions on how we want to expose these images. 
Okay, so I think I know you guys pretty well, and I bet you guys were wondering, when's he gonna talk about picture profiles? What picture profile does he use? So, okay, I'm gonna talk about picture profiles. Uh, firstly, I do wanna say that I don't really shoot log with these Sony mirrorless cameras. I've dabbled a little bit, and I've always run into issues with artifacts and noise, and I just haven't been pleased with the process of grading log footage. Do you know Log has been around since the film days? It's really not a new thing, and people get great results using Log, but it's almost always with a more robust, stronger codec than what the Sony mirrorless system offers. So I never shoot Log, because I just really don't feel like it's one of the strengths of these cameras. Remember how I said that mastering a camera is all about limiting those weaknesses? Okay, so what picture profile do I use? Okay, well, a little while ago, I stumbled across the EOS Pro HD picture profiles, and I really liked the idea of achieving something a little bit closer to Canon colors uh, in these Sony cameras. So I downloaded those, I think it was like 15, 20 bucks, and you basically go in and you adjust all of the color depth and the knee and all of these like minuscule settings within the camera, and you tweak the picture profile. So. I use the EOS Pro HD variation of the Cine 2 picture profile. Now a lot of people say why Cine 2 and not Cine 4? Well I watched a video by I believe it was Harv Video Audio Stuff, really good channel talking about some really technical parts of the Sony mirrorless cameras and he compared Cine 1, Cine 2, Cine 3, and Cine 4 gamma curves and Cine 2 was the one that had the best dynamic range and it tended to look the best out of camera. So that's the one that I really enjoy shooting with on Sony cameras. So let's talk really briefly about LUTs. I've used a lot of different LUTs and the ones that I really like are these lens distortions finishing LUTs. They're very subtle and they give your films a very consistent look throughout. My favorite is the cashmere LUT. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle here is low light and ISO sensitivity. So first of all, go watch the Make Art Now video on the A7 III picture profile for low light shooting. You've probably already seen it if you're watching this video. It's basically a required viewing if you own an A7 III. That video basically lays out a picture profile closer to Rec. 709 that you can use to get a better image in low light with this camera. So I'm gonna take that video and I'm gonna add to it a little bit. Remember me talking about those old school video guys? Well, one thing I thought that was always funny about those guys is they used the term gain instead of ISO. And me coming from more of a DSLR world, I'm used to the term ISO. It sounds more like a term a filmmaker would use where you know your typical ENG video guy might use the term gain. Well, I watched this talk with the great Alistair Chapman. He kind of changed how I think of those two things. So if you think about what ISO actually meant back in the film days, is it referred to the sensitivity of film stocks. When you look at what a digital sensor is doing, it actually makes more sense to call it gain because you're not actually changing the sensitivity of the camera. You're just adding gain, you're upping that noise floor, just like you're turning the volume up on an FM radio. You're gonna hear the scratchiness, you're gonna see more artifacts, and you're going to lose color information and dynamic range. So if you were to actually change the sensitivity of the camera, you wouldn't lose dynamic range or color information. So lots of modern cameras like the new Sony FX9 have introduced the ability to actually change your camera sensitivity. Uh, it has a base ISO of 800 and 4000 where the dynamic range and color information should be about the same. So that's not true for mirrorless cameras like the Sony a7 III. Uh, for each time you raise the ISO, you're adding gain to the image. So that means you're losing dynamic range, you're losing color information, and you're adding grain to the image. So while these cameras are very good in low light, and they can give you a pretty clean image, it's not always ideal to raise the ISO. 
So in the end, Sony has unfortunately stagnated a little bit with the codecs and the power they're putting into these mirrorless cameras. I came into the Sony game with the Sony a6500 back in 2016, and my a7 III still shoots on the same 420 8-bit codec, which is a bit of a disappointment. But what I hope this video did is I hope it helped you realize that whether you're shooting with an Ari Alexa or you're shooting with your point and shoot, the real key to getting compelling video is mastering the camera that you already have. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.